I'm back home feeling all right. I was bogged down for a couple of days. I got home uh, Thursday and for about three days I couldn't hardly get off the couch. But I suppose after everything I went through, body body need to recover and rest a little bit. Um, I current I started easing back into working out. Um, just using the X3 solely right now and doing some stretching. And I guess I'll update. I'm gonna have to, you know, drop out of doing Matt Storm's show. Um, obviously, it's in four weeks, and I can't be a hundred percent. So I hate to do that, but health and everything is always number one. Um, the the heart issue, the AFib, that's that's nothing like self-induced. That's just some genetic flaw where I have an irregular heartbeat and something kicks it off where the flutter increases and the top half of your heart is beating twice as fast as the bottom half. Um, I had it actually turn into a full-blown heart attack a couple of years ago, but I, like I had said in a previous video, I caught it before it uh, got too bad this time, and I was able to go in and put get on an IV of uh, some drugs to bring the heart rate down, but I had four to five flutters between every heartbeat. The nurses were making fun of me because they said I had the most perfect flutters they'd ever seen in their life. And I said, well, my heart's been doing this all since I was a kid. So <laughs> it's had lots of practice. And um, I was talking to my doctor. I'm going to see my cardiologist tomorrow, and we're probably going to do an ablation surgery. So... That's where they go in and, like I've, I've mentioned, they, they actually burn the nerves that cause the heart flutter. And I'm looking forward to that because I don't want to worry about this crap anymore. Um, and a, a, a friend of mine on Facebook had it done and was very happy he did it. Because when you go into AFib, you feel like dog shit. And it's almost like you stand up, you, you're winded. Um, moving around, you get so tired, you, you have to lay down, but you can't sleep and you're sweating. And at first I thought I was getting a flu or something. Um, but then I felt the top half of my heart pounding and checked my pulse. I was at 150. So the top half of my heart was beating 150. And then the bottom half is normally around 70. And one worry is the blood will pool in the bottom of the heart. Last time I did get a clot in the back artery. So when the blood pools, the platelets settle and it causes clots. And then it can come out and cause uh, plugging. You, you don't want one of those to go to your brain. We recently lost uh, a face, uh, influencer, Joey. He had a uh, blood clot lodge in his brain and kill him. So... I had an ultrasound done where they go down your throat and check out everything. And I had no blood clotting, so that's good. My blood work was 100%. Um, I owe that to Humanifort. If I wasn't taking Humanifort, I'd be in a lot worse place. Humanifort's saving my life. But um, So my, my blood work was beautiful. And then one issue we ran into is I have really good blood pressure. It, it usually is like 115 over 70. Um, if I'm on the high end, it's like 125 over 80. But those drugs they put you on to keep your heart rate down also lower blood pressure. So the first day they put me on these drugs, my, my blood pressure went down to 80 over like 50. And you don't want that. So I got a day on a second run of drugs. And that didn't work. So then I got a third day on a third run of drugs. That didn't work. So then they did the cardio version. Uh, the cardio version, they knock you out and they hook you up to a defibrillator and they shock your heart. It'll briefly stop and then 
come back up. And after a couple shocks, the flutters quit. Then they monitored me for a day and I went home. Um, so there's just concerns with that. I have to be very mindful of it. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting this ablation surgery. So I just don't, it's one thing I don't have to worry about because anybody that's followed me knows that I have spent the last couple of years really focusing on getting my health back and helping other people. So I'm going to continue. Um, my biggest focus right now is continuing to help all these other guys that have been doing TRT wrong and taking steroids and uh, understanding how these things actually work and not hurting themselves. So all the guys that I train for bodybuilding now, that I won't train guys that are going to be pounding trend balloon and all that bullshit. We're going to go the TRT route and just keep your levels optimal and use primitive eating and then variable resistance. Everybody I train buys an X3. And then at the bodybuilding level, um, Emmerich Delsig, I'm working with him right now to come up with a training system where we incorporate the X3 and some of his uh, negatives. And that I'm looking for, that's going to be fun, kind of experimenting and throwing that around. That's going to be the a next level thing. Um, since I got Emmerich to try out the X3, uh, the same thing happened. His brain went, this is next level. We are going to do some shit, you know. So I have to thank John Jaguish, Jaquish for um, inventing the X3 and taking the time to study variable resistance. Uh, he's working on a documentary right now on variable resistance. I'm going to be in it. And we're going to Ohio to Westside Barbell because they use variable resistance in all their training. They've even made special machines just for their gym that are based off variable resistance. Standard weight training is shit. It's, you know, our bodies in nature, we just pick something up in our weak position so we can safely carry it around in the strong position. And that doesn't, that's not optimal for muscle growth. And then if you add too much load, you hurt yourself and strain things. So you're limited. With variable resistance, we can load the muscle as hard as we possibly want and keep constant tension on it and reach full hypoxia. And when some pig-headed guys wake up to that, they'll realize that it is superior and start using it. And we are at the forefront of this change. It's pretty exciting. It's fun to be a part of it. I'm proud of, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of being a part of this movement and... Uh, Dr. Jaquish and Emmerich have been a couple of the best friends I've ever had since losing Phil Hernan. Um, I still, still miss Phil all the time, getting a little choked up here, but having those two was part of, I met those two through Phil and it's like, I'm living a little bit of Phil through them. Um, and you know, they're both incredibly intelligent people and have done their, done their, their studying and, um, my experience and then grabbing hold of these guys, we're going to be some next level shit. Some guys need to start paying attention. We're going to have guys that are 80 years old that are jacked and ripped and healthy and prove that these guys just gluttonously eating all these processed shit and pounding steroids and you just standard weight training. Um, there's nothing, there's nothing about that, that, uh, I'm going to shut this TV off. It's flashing and doing weird shit and it's messing my video up. So from here, I guess myself, I'm going to continue to work through all the body issues that I had had accumulated through weight training all those years and doing construction work. And um, I've 
pretty much reversed every single health problem I had. I've come off about, I was on eight different medications. Um, I can't be on any meds to keep my heart rate down because of the blood pressure thing. So I can't take some daily med. That's why we're considering the ablation, the ablation surgery. But the, um, so I, I do have the stents in my heart from when I had blockage and I can have to continue to take Plavix for that. Um, but other than that, I just, um, I take some gabapentin for when I get worked up, as everybody knows, I'm on the autism spectrum. So I, at times get overstimulated and I can't handle things and the the gabapentin is a very mild um it helps like nerves and instead of using like benzodiazepines or something like that it's it's very mild it's not it doesn't it's just enough to take the edge off of stuff um especially at night to try to shut the, the mind off with autism we get overstimulated from all the lights and noises like noises really hurt me and i can't be under fluorescent lights too long um and then just too many things going on i i can only focus on a few things so my biggest focus is right now is just i'm going to continue just help my clients um and I'm built, working on my website. I will be, you know, pretty soon putting Humanifort in the Delsic Defense Face Cream, which I'm going to, I stand behind that shit. People need to know what Humanifort does. And not taking Humanifort is quite frankly on the, like, if you know what it does, not taking it's idiotic. It's, it's like somebody giving you a little shot of the fountain of youth and you going, meh. You know, uh, Dr. Serrano has some good write-ups of his studies on it. We've got multiple studies of, we've seen it do some miraculous things. They're the natural growth factors that constructed your entire body. So they continue to construct your body. We talk about um, autophagy, where you break down dead cells and regenerate them as new. We can do that through fasting to an extent, but Humanifort does it all the time and when we're fasting we can get catabolic humanifort actually balances these things out so we're not catabolic while fasting and we come out of a fast we're not just more anabolic we weren't catabolic in the first place so it's twofold so we can incorporate that with some uh within fitness i've started training a young I'm going to make him a stud. Uh, his name is Noah. He reached out to me when I mentioned I want to mentor somebody that's young. And Noah is 22 years old and at this point wants to, you know, he wants to stay drug free. And down the road, if he chooses, I will safely consult him in just using TRT to keep his levels optimal and keep him healthy. So we can do these things till we're 100 years old. I'm really excited about training Noah because he has that drive, that want. I can't, I can't give somebody that want. They have to have it. You know, they have to have it for themselves. They want to do it for themselves. Um, if I'm training somebody and they aren't checking in with me and they aren't wanting to win, and they're kind of willy-nilly just doing it and going through the motions and not trying to get to the next level of their training every week and their diet every week and trying to optimize everything. And they even need to bug me, like, Coach, what can we do to go further? That's what I need, and Noah's got this. This kid, he's shooting me his blood work. We got his blood work done. His free test is incredibly high for being a natural kid which means he's got some uh, Michael Hearn genetics going on. Uh, people that don't know who Michael Hearn is, you can look him up. He's in his 50s. He's been a bodybuilding model 
all his life. Um, everybody out there tries to say, you know, there's this big thing. And he, he likes the fact that everybody thinks he's on drugs because it gives him more attention. Everybody, you know, will talk shit about him. But Emmerich worked for Balco Labs. Emmerich knows. They tested him. His natural test levels were ridiculously high, like 1,400 rather than 1,000. So he has the ability to put on more muscle than most guys. It's just a genetic thing. His body doesn't think 1,400 is out of range because it's his natural level. The top level, though, as we've proven, you know, that's your total test isn't really that important. It's the free test. But those guys also have really high free testosterone because their body doesn't fight it. So Noah, I'm pretty proud to say, is in that category. And um, he just got the X3 recently and loves it. He had some back issues from lifting weights, hurt himself. And he said, he called me, he's like, coach, this X3 is awesome. And I feel great. I don't hurt. And so the training, I got him right now just getting used to the X3. And we started his diet. I'll be showing Noah off in the near future. Um, we're going to try compete in classic physique. He was thinking physique because he wasn't able to train his legs right because of the back hurting. But with the variable resistance X3, we're going to be able to heal all that. And he's going to be able to grow some nice big legs. Um, I like classic physique. I think it's a great class. Uh, bodybuilding, phew, yeah, right now it's kind of a mess. I'm sick of the distended stomachs and the eating fast food and all these processed carbs. These guys are carrying 30 pounds of garbage in their guts. So guys that are 300 pounds on stage should be 270. And they would actually look bigger if they had a little waist because it exaggerates their look like Flex Wheeler used to have, or Kevin Leveroni. So the guys that used to weigh 250 and look 300, now I got these guys that are 300, and they have these giant midsections. And it's, it's just gluttony. So with primitive eating and keeping all the processed shit out of their diets, it's not about calories, it's about building blocks and not eating excess energy. Getting fatter does not make you build more muscle. So um, I'm ranting here, but I'm going to continue to make videos like this uh, daily and post them up. I'm going to also start documenting some of my training as I go along. Because this whole entire year, I'm like I, I've openly discussed, I take 10 milligrams a day of testosterone. 10 milligrams microdose daily will bring you up to the top end of normal. Nothing will go out of range, but you're optimal. And I'm going to see just how much muscle I can put on at 45 years old using the X3 and some Delsig training principles with primitive eating, some fasting. Um, right now, I'm a very respectably lean 205 pounds. For anybody that wants to know my height, I'm five foot nine. I have a physique that on stage look bigger than I am because I have small joints and a very small waist. I wear 29 inch waist pants, sometimes 30. And when I competed, my legs were 30 inches and so was my waist. So um, I have very small ankles and knees, so my legs look exaggerated. I'm not as big as I appear on stage. Uh, I would normally, you know, like when I competed at the North Americans, I was only 211 pounds. But if you look at my pictures, guys would probably guess me at like 250. So I have, I have some, uh, I guess, genetics that way. People talk about endomorph, ectomorph, mesomorph. Mesomorph is where you are... You have the perfect frame and you naturally have a ton of muscle and you, that's very that like mesomorphs are 
meant to be bodybuilders almost. Ectomorphs are like the guys that are basic, naturally more of a twig and have a hard time putting on weight. And then endomorphs are the guys that kind of get fat easy, carry more body fat in the midsection. They can put on a lot of size, but getting shredded, that's a hard time for them. Um, myself, I would put that I am a cross between a mesomorph and an ectomorph. I was a very skinny kid, but I still put on muscle better than a lot of people. And my scapula is wide, so I, you know, I have some width, which ectomorphs usually don't have. So, um, like I said, I, I, you know, people can be kind of a cross between these things. So I put myself between an ecto and a meso. And I just have to use that. And um, at this point, I'm going to focus on some very basic movements just to bring... Um, my shoulders weren't able to grow for so long because I was so internally rotated. Um, my lats weren't able to grow because of the same thing. For a while, there was two years I couldn't even train legs because my hips and knees and everything got so tight. Um, if it wasn't for the X3, I, I wouldn't be able to have been re reversed this, especially still working hard labor jobs and whatnot. So... I'll cut this video off. I want to keep it, I don't want to go too long here. It's already been 20 minutes and I start to lose people at that point. I'm rambling on. So stay tuned, but here I am. I'm home. I'm doing all right. I've caught up mostly with uh, all my clients and um, taken on a few new clients, uh, maybe one today. But I'm, my biggest focus is going to be teaching guys how to properly use TRT, uh, informing people about Humanofort, working on my website. That'll be a subscription base where you can get to see unique videos of myself and Emmerich. Emmerich and I are talking about once a week, getting together on a Sunday and making videos. And then we'll have videos of our training, uh, videos of nutrition. We'll talk TRT even uh, maybe some things that, you know, like the, the research chems and peptides. But it's all going to be geared toward keeping guys healthy and doing things right. So uh, if the guys that uh, think that it's about pounding Trenbolone and donuts and heavy whipping cream and just slamming weights, um, they're not going to, they're going to be a waste of your time to come over there. If you're somebody that legitimately wants to learn some good shit, that's going to be the place to be. So, uh, going, I guess I'll cut it off right here. I hope everybody is doing great. Um, it's, it's important to me that everybody's happy and healthy and doing good. Grab yourself an X3, grab some Humanifor, start eating some damn protein and cut out all the crap. And uh, we'll see what happens to you. I guarantee you're going to like.